The story so far, I am porting Fusix to the ESP8266. Currently, I have it in a state where it boots quite happily and runs all the way up to the login prompt. The file system is on a SD card. There is a reasonable amount of flash, but it's too slow to run off due to the rather swap-heavy nature of the system. Boot time is respectable. Let me just hit the reset button and demonstrate. There you go. Uh, at some point I should get Fusuk working. Um, so nearly everything works, including a timer, although it's not very accurate due to quite a lot of stuff happening with interrupts turned off. Uh, it's running in single tasking mode due to the limitations of the system, but actually I can probably run it in multitasking mode. The swap's fast enough. So, uh, today we're going to work on the last major piece of the puzzle, which is you can't actually interact with it, which makes it a little tricky to use. Uh, first, however, let's just do a little bit of maintenance on the flash. Now that we're no longer copying the file system onto flash, uh, we can make the image bigger. So current, this thing has four megabytes of flash, which is 512 uh, let me start that sentence again. It's got four megabytes of flash. The flash, it's the uh, file system partition starts at one megabyte and extends for 512 arrays blocks, which is two megabytes. So we can actually extend that. Uh, if we halve this, that means the file system now starts at 512 k into the flash, giving us 512k for the code. We're actually using about 48k of that, but this gives us lots of buffer if we need more. And uh, so that's three and a half megabytes, which is 3584k, which is uh, 896 arrays blocks. So we can actually do this and make the flash file system bigger. It's slow, but it's there, so we might as well support it. And there we go, two and a half megabytes of usable flash. Uh, it's just created a new file system. This, this does this if uh, there's no file system found. Uh, but when I say file system, I mean that the FTL logical block device has been created. There are no partitions and no Fusix file system. But uh, let's commit that. Increase file system size. Okay, uh, so we want to make the TTY work well. Right now, I'm using the ROM routines to read and write bytes. Well, I'm using ROM routines to write bytes, but not reading yet. The way the TTY works in Fusix is it's strictly interrupt driven. Uh, you notice that there is no. Uh, TTY get C. The way it works is once the TTY is set up and running, an interrupt arrives to say there's some data. TTY interrupt here then pulls the byte out of the read buffer and pushes it towards the TTY device. Uh, the TTY device then sticks in this buffer and then delivers it to the process. Uh, when needed. So the actual primitives are uh, this one detect this one polls to see whether it's ready to do a write. Uh, set up something to do with modem. Don't know about this one. 
and I don't know about this one. So let's take a look at the MSP430 version, which I'm basing this on. So here you can see that the put C is very straightforward. We, we spin waiting for the buffer to be empty, and then we write the byte. Sleeping is null. TTY white write ready just polls the transmit buffer status and returns one of these enumerations. Setup as no op, carrier as no op, data consumed as no op. Yeah, very straightforward. And the only issue we've got is actually implementing it. Anyway, so I've got the ROM disassembly here. So if I go to ETS put C, see what it does. This just calls UART TX one char. Which actually does the work. And oh, there's a comment. So this is actually pretty lightweight. It's not calling any additional functions. And here is rx one char. Oh, there's an interrupt handler. Very interesting. I hope it's not buffered. So we've got TX1 char, RX1 char blocking, RX1 char presumably polling. So what is this doing? These are some constants. This loads a byte, multiplies A2 by A4, A2 is this, um, I also don't see much in the way of hardware registers. Okay, let's find where I put this documentation. Is a UART mentioned or is this in the technical docs? I think this is in the other document. So if the ROM routines are buffering, then we may need to do some additional work. Okay, um, apparently I can't find the that reference. Be nice if this had hyperlinks as well as being, you know, more complete, better written, etc. There we go, UART. So we have one read-write UART and we've got one write-only UART designed for debugging. We are using the, the read-write UART. The ROM's already set it up, which is nice. So we don't have to worry about board rates or anything.
Okay, this is useful. This tells us how to access the uh, the two hardware FIFOs. Uh, this will tell us whether we're ready to read or ready to write. The I was actually expecting a one byte buffer, which is what the code here is expecting. So uh, TTY ready can be ready now, ready soon, or or ready later. So, given that we have a buffer, uh, if the buffer is not full, we are ready soon. If it is, sorry, if it's not full, we are ready now. If it is full, we are either ready soon or ready later, probably ready soon for our system. So, the FIFO length is not necessarily the one we want. Configure uh, interrupts. Oh, and a screenshot of the interrupt handler, which is actually quite useful. Well, and that's about all there is to it. Okay. Does it say which... Uh, how the interrupt is delivered? Wow, 128 byte buffer. That's quite big. So what we are looking for is we want the interrupt to happen whenever the receive buffer is not empty. That is, there is buffer waiting. So we've got receive buffer full, which we don't care about. Uh, receive buffer overflow. Uh, these are very similar. Receive buffer full will happen when you've got flow control turned on and the UART will take care of turning of telling the sender to stop sending. Receive overflows if there isn't any flow control and we don't have flow control. Uh, when configure threshold value of tout Enable interrupts and UART begin to receive data. It will trigger the tout interrupt once stop transmission time exceeds the set threshold. I think what this is doing is, yeah, you get an interrupt a short time after data shows up. So this is the one we want. So we need to set up an interrupt handler and use this particular interrupt. Now the, uh, the fact that the ROM's got this, its own interrupt handler, suggests that uh, the ROM has already set up its buffer so that our incoming data will get sent somewhere um, I think 
see we can very easily just override this and set our own interrupt handler so that the interrupts will now be coming to us rather than the ROM. Um, I'm just wondering if this is going to upset uh, the transmit code. Now this is the init code. That sets up the clock speed, which we have overridden. All these memws are memory synchronization constructions, and they'll indicate that something is fiddling with the registers. I believe A5 is the register base. Maybe. Right, well, I think that what we're going to have to do is to change k put char so that instead of calling ets put c, it, uh, we talk directly to the hardware. So that should be documented. Um, or, of course, I could just go look at the Arduino code. It's probably much easier to copy what they're doing. I don't see any reference to the actual data register. hate that documentation. Okay, so somewhere in here there should be a reference to UART, like here perhaps. Uh, this is more complicated than it ought to be because uh, there's some stuff in place for uh, GDB. You can use GDB to debug Arduino, Arduino programs, which is rather nice, really. So it's... Yikes. I actually don't see. Here we go. Here is. You are doing things. This is interrupt enable. Yeah, this is configuring the ISR, so we're actually going to want to use some much the same sort of code. But I don't want to go there yet. I just want to. This is what we want. This code. In fact, these three functions. Okay, so... What we're going to do is
you you are TX five four full, so it's full if there's more than seven F bytes available. That doesn't seem right to me. Now, of course, we get the choice of whether we're using the Arduino registers or the um, SDK registers. I'd rather use the Arduino registers because they seem to be simpler. So this is going to be uh, USS is... one C U one S so so this should be the number this is the the TX FIFO count new art status. Okay let the actual register documentation in the SDK stuff is less bad than the rest of it so Let me try and find that. That should be at the bottom somewhere. Yeah, you art. And we're using one C, so this is you art status. The level of the you art TXD pin. Eight bits. Uh, is that the? No, that's the default value. Okay, so the one we're actually looking for is this the amount of data in the UART TX FIFO. So what this is doing is saying we're going to consider the UART full if there is, if it is more than half full, which is reasonable. So. For TX FIFO available, we're just going to go U1F equals C. Um, I should add the reason why I'd rather use the Arduino definitions than the SDK definitions is because eventually I would like to make this code completely independent of the SDK, which right now you have to refer to in the make file to get headers. And that's a pain in order to build with, so I would much rather uh, replace that dependency with the Arduino stuff that we can just cut and paste into our code. Okay, so this should now be using our own code to write with, so let's build and it doesn't work. Because we haven't included the registers. Okay, so that doesn't work because I am using UART1 rather than UART0. Okay. There you go. So, no longer using the ROM routines. Let me just. Yep. Yeah. With declaring them. But we're not using them. Okay, so write ready is very much the same code. So we're going to say uh, I will actually put this into its own function.
So this is just going to be gx buffer fill that's greater than or equal to 7f, then we're actually ready now, but uh, if it's less than that, then because say we're ready now. Okay. So that's told us how to write. I think the next thing we want to do is, I mean, this is all set up code that we don't care about, is we want to register our, our ISR. Uh, we are not using TTY in it for this. Is TTY in it actually called anywhere? Yes, it is. We could use TTY in it for this. You see, normally we would attach our interrupt handler down here. Yeah, let's just use Okay, um, TTY, let's, actually, let's put this at the bottom, so whenever, whenever we get an interrupt we print a queue. Um, we probably, yeah, okay, just making sure I understood how it worked. We probably want to, uh, I think for an interrupt you get, you get this prototype. Now it's not ETS compare zero inum. This is a SDK function, so it will be an eagle sock. Um, Okay, where is that coming from? It's not a... Is this an Arduino? Oh, it's not defined anywhere. We had to do that ourselves. And very luckily, uh, there is one. So that is UART INUM. Okay, we haven't set anything up yet, so we have to do that. This will be in the ESP stuff. Uh, U0, U0IE. Yeah. So. We actually want to configure some of these. So let's take another look at the UART stuff and look for USIE. So this is where it's configuring. Yep, that's, this is just what we're looking for. So let's just cut and paste all this code down to here. Uh, intrig, intrig. That's ah sixteen. What's this? Um, when the RX five zero full interrupt triggers, the value of one triggers a lot. The value of one two seven will not give much time for the ISR to clear the five zero, but the next byte is dropped. 
Okay, so this is the this is the uh, the RX fill level that we want to actually make a uh, we want an interrupt to happen at. So you see tot Also I've just realized remembered rather the buffer is seven bits wide, so this actually means full. So, yep, that's correct. That's not half the full, that is full, full. Uh, UC tot is level and this this will generate an interrupt if I understood it correctly this will generate an interrupt whenever the whenever data shows up so I don't actually I think we can do without the RX FIFO level interrupt because we're not as sophisticated as the Arduino code is So okay, you not interrupt clear. do this with interrupts turned off so we get a atomic change so that clears all the interrupts um, this is enabling RX FIFO full interrupt no we want RX FIFO timeout. So I think that's everything. So I believe that. That may be all the code we need. So it boots and I press a key. Fantastic, it's working. We get lots of cues because we haven't actually read anything or cleared the interrupt. So what we want to do here is uh, we want to keep reading a byte and delivering it until we have run out of until the uh, the FIFO buffer is full. Um, let me just go look up where TTY in proc lives. It is of course in TTY. See, I don't know what happens if the if Fuzix's TTY fills up. Um. 
I don't actually see any code in here. Do we really want to call this from inside an interrupt handler? Right, if the queue is full, it drops the, the byte and beeps at the user. Okay, so I think this is the right one. So what we want to do is keep looking. Yeah, this is the code we want. So we want a similar function rx buffer full. I'm going to bet that this is rxc. So while rx buffer fill is not zero, that is while there is some data. read a byte send it to the TTY um, and we will also need to clear the interrupt I hope I've got that right. Well, it builds. Okay, here we go. Fantastic. It works. Look, LS works. We have a completely running system. Control C works. It's a little drastic, but it works. Okay, um, I don't know how the this F disk works. Okay, so it's listed all our partitions. Here is our SD card. Here is the flash. Where does geometry come from? I want to partition the flash, you see. Oh, right, we haven't implemented this. Get geo. I. don't think this is implemented it should be implemented here but it's not eh, anyway okay what else have we got uh, we've got time which I think is not going to produce anything useful yes uh, zero time taken for that command oh PS here are all our processors uh, PS minus a in it should be on that list, I would have thought. Who am I? Root, of course. Oh, yes. Uh, so this is our boot script. Remember, every time we run it, we get an error saying that it can't create the utemp file. So we should just be able to do... Make dear run. Why can't we make run? I'm sure I have write permission. Yeah. Uh, that's not good. What was it doing? 
that address. Oh, interest. No, hang on, that's the wrong address. Oh, yes, this is the. This is inside the ROM. 101db. No, it's inside the user program. Uh, mount crashed for some reason. Okay, well, let's hit the reset button. Cannot create. And there's no M tab. I don't think the file system is read write. So that's because I actually commented out the this line. Okay, so now it should be rewrite. So we should be able to do put root prints the uh, the current root file system in a M tab compatible format. Okay, that's working. And mukdir var run. Okay, do we have the editor. Uh, yes, tab doesn't work. Elvis file. I'm not sure we do. You've got said. Yeah, I don't see anything. Okay, well... Uh, directory. Uh, yes, now one issue is that the delete key doesn't do anything. I have to type Control H instead. Um, that's actually configurable somewhere. And we just need to edit the TTY somehow. Edit the TTY configuration. somewhere. Um, we can reduce this, which will limit the size, because we only have one working TTY. The other one is write only. Okay, there is our RC. Um, I'll edit this on the PC. I'm going to have to build some more stuff anyway. Uh, does df work now? What do you mean you can't open mtab? It's right there. No, it's not. M to barbab. No move. Okay. Right, the reason why... The reason why that file name was wrong was me mistyping and then trying to use delete. Okay, let's remove this. Cannot remove. Interesting. Well, right, df now works. We've used 62% of our file system. Do we have MUKFS? We do. Okay. So let's try MUKFS dev HDA. Just use the whole thing. 332048 and see what happens. Confirm. Yes. So now there's be a long pause while it does stuff to the NAND flash. Probably a very long pause.
I wasn't aware it was going to do this. I thought it was just going to write the file system structure. Anyway, while that's going, let's check this in. And let's go and look for some more applications. Now, we do want, oh, there we go, it's finished. Okay, so we should now have, uh, we should now have a file system on HDA. So, dev HDA, ah, try that again. Mount dev HDA munt. There you go. There is our flash file system mounted. So touch F, touch there, foo. Um, do we have copy? We've got copy. So I can copy bin uh, F disk to here. Works fine. Let's unmount it. Interesting. Has that actually unmounted it? I think it hasn't. So I don't know what error that's producing. Uh, we're missing some stuff. We don't have m we don't have move, which is odd so very odd it might be another command probably CP hard linked to move uh, the reason for this is Um, if you move files, if you move a directory from uh, one file system to another, it has to do a recursive copy and then delete. So MV is going to have to contain nearly all the code of CP anyway. So you see there it's fetching the program name. What does it do with prog name? Yeah, is it is it the CP personality or the move personality? So uh, to do that, we want to copy. We want to link CP to move, but we can't because there's no LN. Okay, let's go find LN. Um, <laughs> this is also LN. Okay, so we've got copy. So we want to copy, copy to LN. Right. Then we link copy to move. Now we remove. Uh, we still need LN to. Yeah, we link copy to LN1. Then we move ln1 to ln. Right, we now have uh, ln, cp, and mv are all linked to the same file on disk. This is the inode count. So this is similar to symbolic linking, except it works at the file system structure level. Uh, Unix file systems are garbage collected. You can have as many directory entries as you like pointing at underlying files. And normally you have one directory entry and one file, 
which is indicated here. They're like, who am I is the only thing pointing at the who am I binary. Uh, but now we have three different directory entries pointing at MV. The underlying data will only get freed up when the last directory entry disappears and the reference count goes to zero. Okay. Um, no, I can't remember what I was doing now. I would still like to be able to unmount that file system. Now let's get yeah, sync works. This looks like it's working. So anyway, we want to ln cp to mv, cp to ln. This, these aren't commands that are run. They are directives to the UCP program, so that will work. Uh, here we've got the v7 stuff. So we've got programs like tty, which tells you your current tty. Uh, rev reverses a file. Like so. I'm not sure if pipes will work, so let's just try this. Right, they don't. Have to, can we control C that? Mm, apparently we can't. Uh, that's because we're running in single tasking mode. Um, what other useful stuff is there? There's actually quite a lot of programs. Oh, we've, of course we've done util. Uh, UE is micro Emacs. Um, Things like the 6809 assembler or the small c compiler, which doesn't know how to talk to, which only knows how to generate code for a few architectures, of which this isn't one, won't help. Leve is a VI like editor. Uh, cursors games are games. What's in DW? Drive wire. Uh, that only makes sense if you're on a device that's got drive wire. CPM's not much use because uh, this isn't a Z80. What's this? Oh, this looks like more old Unix utilities. Okay, let's just hit the reset button and reboot that. Yeah, mounting dirty file system. Um, I think we've actually got the bulk of the useful stuff. We could build the games, but the games will probably want cursors. Well, of course they'll want cursors. These are the cursors games. Um, so we can build the command line games. Let's do those. So, file dot sp six six. Uh, applications, games, make file. Okay, now how did we do this? Don't need any of that. I think the rest will just work. So Ah, we need term cap. Uh, that is that library. So I 
think that will work. Good. Not good. Uh, this is a host compiler. Interesting. So that should be this is presumably building a utility that's being used to build other things. There we go. So we've got lots of these missed things. It's an adventure game of some description. Okay, this is this is a manifest listing the um, contents of this directory. So we should be able to use this to update our to generate the file system. Uh, this will have been processed. This might be my late unlamented build system. But we can do this easily enough. We want to be in So this now wants to be, uh, that was all wrong. These all want to be B gets. Let's, let's get them all actually. Z3, Z4, Z5, Z8. Okay, we want to duplicate these. Uh, Trek stuff wants to be separate. Applications, games, like so. Uh, these want to be the CH mods. which are all 0755, apart from a few others. Uh, Fortune.dat is a data file, so that's going to be 644. Okay, so, the lib cd user lib trek cd user lib trek
This isn't a very nice way of building a file system. There isn't a standard. So applications, games. Yep, Star Trek. Yep. Okay, so unplug the card. Plug it into my PC. Is it SDG? It is, so we should just be able to now do update flash. Okay, it ran out of space because the file system's too big. I wonder if we can make the file system bigger. It's 32 meg. Okay. So let me just try something a bit shifty. Create a new primary partition to make it the whole, th whole thing, like so, 1.8 gigabytes, and write it. I don't know what the Fusix maximum limit for a file system is. Um, do I need to increase the f that? Okay, that's better. And why doesn't it? Why isn't there a tailor made? That's because it didn't build. That's why. Okay, it didn't run out of disk space. Um. It ran out of file inodes, but I am honestly a bit fuzzy about what that number actually means. Seventeen is exist. We already have a user lib. Okay, right. Unplug, fire up the serial terminal again, plug and hit the reset button. And I forgot to update the Got to update the RC file. Well, anyway, we're now read write, and I'll copy this so that we get a M tab. Okay. So games. So here are our games. We should be able to run. Let's try a fortune. Thus spake the master programmer. Without the wind, the grass does not move. Without software, hardless, hardware is useless. Well, that's very true. Let's try one of the missed things, assuming I managed to type the file name correctly. Okay, those are error messages. Hammerabai. Try your hand at governing ancient Sumeria. I don't want to govern ancient Sumeria and I can't control C it, so. Oh, uh, and I just managed to kill my serial terminal.
No, I managed to background my serial terminal. No, I did kill it. So who's using TTY USB 0? I created a subshell. Okay, um, I don't know why Control C is not working. But we're going to have to hit the reset button again. It is not resetting. Power cycle. Okay, uh, that's the serial terminal has. The serial terminal has not crashed. What happened was I hit Control S, which meant that it stopped working. Okay, it's now. We have the Fusix prompt again. Um, right, I think probably the next thing to do. We have some games that more or less work. Is to fix the boot script. Actually, I mean, you want to get Fusik Fusix from somewhere. It's in util. Why? We should be building util. Okay, it's obviously not in our script. Yeah. Well, the good news is that we seem to be coping with a um, four gigabyte, four megabyte file system. Oh, that second parameter is the file system size. Oh, I'm an idiot. I thought it had to do with the... Uh, I thought it was way more complicated than that. I thought it had something to do with one of the inode structures. Ah, okay. <sighs> so I don't see any specific U-mount... Uh, does the yeah I think the BCPL compiler will only emit Z80 code Oh no, it is int it is interrupt driven. Oh, we can. Wait, what do you mean? There's no f fourth. No, and I didn't. Apparently, I didn't include that either. Interesting, and some of these files are in here twice. So let me just sort these. Yeah. better. I think that pro 
Oh, can we do TCL? We can probably do TCL. It's a very small TCL. But uh, we could do TCL, but I can't actually remember any TCL. Pilot is another programming language. It's good old Colossal Cave. That's worth doing as basic. Uh, it's a it's a very small basic, but it is at least a basic. Though I notice there is no make file in there, which makes me think that maybe it doesn't work. Um, I am slightly resisting porting stuff like Leve and UE in the cursors games, because that would mean ne needing to set up cursors, and I'd have to figure out what terminal type the serial terminal was. But I think we actually need to. So anyway, let's. Let's edit that RC file. Let's let's port Colossal Cave. So we don't want any of that. We want to do root equals that include applications rules dot esp eight two six six. And it builds. And there is a handy package file. get applications cave advent So that is Colossal Cave. What else? Let's try uh, let's try Leve. That's just to see what how it works. Two six six. Three sets of objects coexist. Don't really like the look of that. I do not want to build the Linux version. Let's just build the VT52 version, to be honest. Because we don't care about cross compilation, uh, multiple compilation in this specific make file. So let's see what this does. Uh, 
Um, it's okay. This is a different type of make file than for the other programs. Yes, we just want a simplified .o. And the, I don't think we want one of these at all, right? Oh, no, we d no, I don't, don't think we do. I think that's provided by the Oh, yes, we do want that. Doesn't it like elf to physics? Because I never actually added the prefix. So what that was actually doing was doing a native, doing a host build. So let's try this. Fantastic. And is there a package file? There is. You can get a man page. Okay. So we get applications levy levy which mod is seven five five levy I do wonder if We've got the user. Can I just do user man? Yeah, user man man one. Is that going to work? into the PC. Oh yes, and I did want to look for Okay, we did put lib error into user lib. Let's just make sure it's readable. I don't think that makes a difference. Done. So reinserted the card into the board. We hit the reset button. No, we don't. We don't. Uh, I need to tell the. I need to tell screen that we're a VT fifty two. I think it's 
that. Now we hit the reset button. Uh, that's weird. The date and time is more or less correct. Okay, so... Right, the file system is read-write, which is a good thing. Uh, Fusuk. Did Fusuk work? Okay, Fusuk, we say slash. Fusuk physics. Yeah, Fusuk physics. HDA2 Okay, well that's not working for some reason. Well, it's, we don't appear not to have any kind of reboot, but we can at least just hit the reset button because we're unmounted. Okay, uh, let's edit RC, shall we? Hmm, that doesn't work. I can see that it's trying to display stuff, but it hasn't worked. Control uh, colon Q does at least exit. Uh, so I think this is... Yeah. So I think that this has at least worked. It is trying to display VT52, but screen is not set up for it. So let's just have a quick... It's title... Screen... Actually, it may not do VT52. Okay, let's change this. Let's go the, do the easier thing. Just change this to be ANSI. Uh, that should work. So yes, we do still have to swap cards. So it is basically now finished. Well, code complete. I mean, there are bugs to fix. Uh, we did see one crash that crashed horribly. It would be nice to be able to catch those and deliver them as signals. But we do now have a functioning Sorry, I'm rapidly r adjusting stuff behind the scenes. We do now have a functioning Unix on a ESP8266 with not a lot of RAM. Oh, yes, there is one useful thing that we can do. Let's just uh, ETCRC. Gah! I forgot to rebuild Leve after I uh, swapped the card out. Well, so now we swap everything back in again, which is why I want to get the thing running in multitasking mode uh, and see if I can make pipes work, because that works on the MSP430. So it should work on this as well. Okay, that's built. 
right. If you want to know what I think this is useful for, the answer is very little. I mean, it's a toy. It doesn't have any real-time abilities. It does big chunks of work with interrupts turned off, uh, such as swapping stuff out. So if you wanted to do anything like run a network stack, you would have to... Uh, you'd probably end up needing to use the interrupt priority system so you eventually you basically run the network stack as a kernel task not as a process uh, and then the kernel sits on top of that so that even when the kernel's got interrupts turned off then the network stack still runs etc etc um, there you go so I don't want to run set date anymore these work okay so so yes that was that was a vi clone just working fine how big is it mm, 27k we don't have a size uh that's that's mostly most of that will be code actually i can figure that out yeah, 25k of code, 2.5k of data, uh, but because on this system we've got 96k of memory, 95.5, the code doesn't occupy data space. So you still get 60 odd k available for your document. Oh yes, and I also wanted to... Um, I'm pretty sure I remembered to add cave to the games list. Oh, it's called advent. User games is not on the path. No, I don't want to restore a saved game, and it doesn't work. Yeah, there's something going on here where it's failing to find error messages. Probably that is... Uh, this. So liberror.txt should contain... We've got less, we've got more, we've got more. This contains all the error messages, so they don't have to be loaded into memory, given how infrequently they're used. But uh, it looks like the binaries are not finding them. Maybe I put them in the wrong place. Uh, libc, no, libs, there we go. No, dot C. No, not that one. Uh, error dot C. So path lib error is where it's supposed to be. User lib lib error dot text. Well, here we are in user lib. Ah, well, uh, okay, so let's take a look at that kernel config. And let's try turning this off. and see what happens. 
Now, assuming it doesn't crash, it crashes. Where is it crashing? Now, this is in kernel code 2882. Uh, yeah, I should add that all those programs were working fine in single tasking mode where you can't actually swap between, you can't task switch between programs at all other than fork and exit. So it's interesting just how well it all worked. Okay, uh, 212882. Okay. Right, this is the same corruption issue I was seeing before. The thing that I spent so much time fighting. That's extremely interesting. So that bug has not actually gone away, it's just hidden. It just doesn't manifest in single tasking mode. I wonder if we are running out of processes, swaps. Uh, we now have a much bigger swap partition, so doesn't help. Let me just figure out what that is. So it's uh, this is kilobytes when I actually I want blocks. Uh, okay well it's 97k so we have, I've got a two megabyte swap partition, I believe. So this was where we had it working for the first time. Here we go. Sector count, yes, two megabyte swap partition. That gives us 20, 21 possible swaps. Which is lots. Somewhere there should be the total number of processors. I think is 16 actually. Oh, this is the total number of file system buffers. So once everything is finished, uh, we can do some rearranging and try to save some memory. And then we look to see how much is left and then increase that number until there is no more free. These are actually binaries. This is, here we go, heap start is at B938. We've got up to C7. So we actually have room for a couple more buffers. Um, okay, so. 
So where does the process table live? So this is the single tasking scheduler. This is the multitasking scheduler. What's probably happening is something along the lines of a task being incorrectly swapped back in after it gets swapped out. Uh, because in the single tasking mode, tasks never get swapped in unless they wake up from a fork, then maybe it's not provoking whatever's going on. Hmm. Uh, P tab. is in k data p tab size is not in here Right, if not defined, you get 16. That's fine. So I'm still not at all sure why it is crashing. At least now it doesn't take so long to start up, which is nice. So he here you can see it do all the swaps in and out. So in it, uh, this will be SH Fuzix. back to uh, for Fusuk rather back to sh the next binary back to init etc 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 until eventually we get to this one where we're trying to swap in process 3 which here has been swapped out and then it falls over at a ROM address. Three B five five is here. You are TX1 char. Why is it even going there? That's a null pointer dereference. No, I don't really follow what's going on there. This doesn't look like this bit of code. It's possible that this is, well, you can't move any of the memory objects around. So, and that's ROM, so that must be ROM. So it can't be a RAM cache thing. And then it bails at a slightly different address here. 
Oh, I know what's happening. Something's going wrong. It's tr trying, the ROM is trying to dump a message. And it's potentially going wrong because we're using the UART. Okay, well, there is one thing we could do about this, which is here in devices.c, we can do This wants to be a Okay, these are all dummies, so we just want to spin with the interrupts off. Okay, we haven't read any of the special registers. And that was a warning going past. Okay, apparently I haven't defined any of these. These need to go in this header file. Dev SD init needs to be is actually defined in that, which is actually a one of those. Okay, fewer warnings. So with luck, this won't double fold. Yep. And we get a much more sensible error message. Uh, I, the next thing to do is to dump the registers and the virtual address, but 2128AE, 2128. Uh, is not actually at an address. So I think that's happening in here somewhere. So let's just print the the registers so that's a zero sp a two a three we can't use a loop here because they're not necessarily contiguous
these should eventually be delivered to either the process as an exception, uh, as a signal, or uh, or if they happen in kernel space, which this one is, I'm not really sure what we do. Kill the process? Panic? Probably panic. With no memory protection, there's actually not a awful lot you can do to recover from something like that. It's usually best just to halt and fail rather than to uh, have try and run with a corrupted system. Okay, so... Ah, I know why that address didn't match anything. I forgot to rebuild the disassembly. So, 28FE is this address. Yep, it's the one after Unix syscall. Uh, A14 is garbage. So, A14 is corrupted. Lining these up. Uh, so yes, something in the fork is not preserving registers under some circumstances. Some very repeatable circumstances. So it doesn't seem to be an exception, uh, uh, an interrupt, because it always happens exactly the same time. And besides, we didn't have any interrupts for a long time. Read special register, I think it was called V adder into address register into V adder. Okay, it's not called V adder. Um, where did I put ocular here? was the exception registers called exe exe v adder okay Yeah, so it's trying to dereference this using this. Okay, that is sensible enough. Uh, the question is why? And the answer is I have no idea. All the same reasoning I had before applies. Uh, it should never manage to return that far with mangled 
registers it's probably whatever it is it'll be something incredibly simple and hard to find so I think what I'm actually going to do is to put it back into single tasking mode the only reason you would ever actually want to run multitasking mode here is for uh, pipes. It'd be really nice to have pipes working. But I think I am going to declare this code complete because it essentially is. Oh yeah, let's just turn this tracing off. So this particular project, I think, is now finished. I mean, there's still debugging to do, but that is a different phase. We now have Fusix working on this ridiculously tiny system quite well. It may forms a perfectly comfortable, if rather small, system to use. Not the most stable, but uh, it's not like I've put any effort into debugging this. Um, there's Levy. Oh, we've got F fourth now. Cannot execute. Really, really. does look like a binary. It's the right size. 7k of code, 9k of data. Why can't it execute it? Because it's not executable. There you go. Fourth. This is mine. I'm very proud of this. Yeah, I'll warrant that most of the stuff you've seen today has never been done in one of these before, because frankly, no one would really want to. So let's try and sum up. Uh, I spent way too much time trying to make the SD card work, and I still don't know why it works. I hate working with SD cards. They are just awful things. Even with a logic analyzer, they're impossible to debug. Um, I mean, I have just cut and pasted the Arduino algorithm for figuring out the clock. And the numbers it comes up with do not make sense, but they seem to work. So maybe the documentation's wrong. Maybe I'm just not understanding how it's all supposed to work. But, I mean, their code for calculating the clock frequency is coming up with a solid zero for all the results. And yet it works, so who knows. Uh, it's a bit of a nasty mess of Arduino stuff, which is these, and ESP SDK stuff, which is these. Uh, that could be cleaned up, which I will, I'll do before trying to uh, upstream this. Um, it looks like sector receiving uh, sectors being passed to the block device driver are always aligned, which is nice because that saves us some annoying code. Um, 
uh, so the, since the last time I touched Fusix, it has changed and there has been some bit rot, so I have had to fix a few things on the way, which is a bit of a shame. Um, it's a hobby project. Uh, AT is, by the I should add, not mine. I should have said this several times. It's based on some very old code by... Well, it's in the banner here. Uh, the, the original Uzi is 1988 onwards and then got abandoned about 2001. That worked on Z80s. And then these two picked it up and improved it dramatically and made it cross-platform. Uh, despite being so tiny, we have a 48k kernel approximately fifty K, yeah. Uh, it, it slowly creeps up over time. But despite having a fifty K code kernel, it works pretty well and even on a system this small gives you a pretty comfortable environment. Uh, it's pretty easy to port. The abstractions are fairly thin, but present where it's useful. Uh, this is the second major port I've done. I've also done a Z80 port to the NC200. And the hardest bit is in all... Well, I didn't have to do the Z80 uh, tricks.s, but on this and the MSP430, switch in switch out stuff was so much work the MSP430 I think does have preemption though I can't imagine why I thought that was a good idea preemption is even worse because you have to do all this from inside an interrupt handler as well I think what it actually does there is it fakes a it fiddles the call stack so that when the interrupt handler returns, it actually returns to a trampoline function that calls switch out. So that happens in uh, outside interrupt context. But you have to allow for switch outs to happen anywhere in the kernel. So I've been a bit fast and loose about interrupt safety with this, because we don't have to worry about that kind of thing. I hope that's not causing us our problems with uh, multitasking mode. Uh, the FDL stuff I did was a complete red herring. It wasn't too much work wasted, and it did mean that I understood how it all worked rather better. The This Dara library is an absolute find. It's small and simple and does exactly what I want it to do, uh, although learning about its quirks was a bit of an issue. I should have realized that it wanted lots of free space so that it could add lots of free pages. Uh, but that works. Uh, let me just try and mount my file system again. Yeah. Yep, absolutely no trouble. Just works. Uh, not understanding how um, MuchFS works was stupid, and I wonder if it's worth trying to adapt the MuchFS program to understand Linux hard drive geometries, or at least seek to the end of the device to see how big it is. Uh, there's that whole get geo ioctl, which is Intriguing. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that. You have to use the block device name. No, you don't. Why is that not working? Yeah, there's a bug there that needs investigating. There should be error messages. Um, but yeah, I think that's worked out quite well. This is the... Uh, this We're up to... 50 15th episode, I believe, which is 
I thought it was only going to take maybe a week to a week and a half, but we spent a lot of time on the FDL stuff and a lot of time on the SD card. So that's, yeah, you know Hofstadter's law, which is that everything takes longer than you expect, even when you take into account Hofstadter's law. So I think that's come out about right. Hmm? Well, um, I'm going to go and do some cleanup, and that's going to be dead boring, and I'm not going to put it on video. So this is going to be the last one. Um, I am curious to know if anyone has actually like sat down and watched or has listened to all these videos. My programming videos seem to be more popular than my bench videos but as I prefer making the bench ones I'm going to do them um, I'm going to do programming ones as well but uh, yeah I suppose I hope you all enjoyed watching this video and all the other ones if you have watched the other ones and please let me know what you think in the comments